Good morning, good morning. Dearly beloved, Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, family in the great city of Little Rock, Arkansas, we bring you greetings this morning. So good to be here in the house of the Lord one more time. Oh, what an exciting day we have on this day. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice, and we will be glad in it. Isn't that right? Uh, certainly, for those of you viewing by YouTube and Facebook, uh, we welcome you as well. Uh, so good to have you uh, tuning in with us on this great Lord's Day. Uh, I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm glad to still be here. Amen. And I like to tell the Greater Galilee family, we're still standing. We're still doing what we have been called to do here in this uh, corner, on the corner of uh, 27th and Lewis. Uh, we're just so happy to be able to continue to do what we are doing. I tell you, uh, brothers and sisters, this has been a year uh, of unrest, but God, but God. He's still holding us and he's keeping us uh, in his care as we continue to share his word by way of social media. And uh, I can't express enough about wearing your mask. Wear your mask. This is very important. It might not seem like much to a lot of people, but to me, it means a lot to me. Uh, you know, I, I often say, you know, the health department and CDC know what they're doing. And uh, we just want to encourage you who are listening, please, please wear your mask, wash your hands, and social distance. Uh, that's what they're asking us to do. And uh, they know more than I do about it. So if I, that I don't know about, I try to follow the instructions. I read up on it. And if it's legit, uh, it's good for me. Uh, so I just to encourage you again to wear your mask. Nothing wrong with it. It might look a little silly. Uh, but you have to get used to it. Uh, amen. But this is a good day. I'm going to bring you a scripture today. And, and I like to say this too as well. Uh, there has never been a time in my life that I have ever experienced a uh, Christmas season the way this one is. Uh, it's something that has never been uh, uh, presented before. I, I, don't, I, I can't remember even anyone talking about a Christmas like this one but uh we want you to know today god is still in control of everything and we're just trusting him through it all and uh we have a guest with us today not a guest but he's one of our very own our youth uh minister our youth pastor he's here with us today and uh, he's going to be bringing the word he's going to bring in i'm telling you this young man he he's a he's a student of God's word. He stay in his word. And, uh, it makes me very proud to have him with us today. And uh, I, I will introduce him after I give you the scripture and prayer. Amen. For those of you who have your Bibles with you, go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. And you will find these words recorded. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his, hand, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Now, if you don't mind, go with me to the book of the Gospel of Luke, second chapter. Begin with the first through the 11th verse. You'll find these words. 
And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee and uh, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea and unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. We May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and listeners of his word. Let us have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come once again in the name of Jesus. We come, first of all, thanking you for this day. Thank you for another opportunity, Father, to come and just share and worship you, worship you, Father. We just thank you for that. We ask God now that you would allow your word to come forth today and use the instrument that you have set here in this place on this day to give your word, Father God, to those who are listening. And Father, we will forever give you the praise, honor, and glory because... It's all about you, Father God, and we thank you. We thank you, Father, that you are the one in control of all that's going on. And Father, while I'm here, we're asking your blessing upon the health care workers who are still striving to do their part. Father God, we ask that you continue to encourage them and strengthen them in the way that you would have them go during this pandemic. And those, Father God, in, in position of leadership, we ask, Father, that you would continue to touch them, Father, and then give them an ear to hear what it is that you would have them to know about what's going on. And, Father, we will forever give you the praise, honor, and glory. We put all our trust in you, Lord, because you all we have in times such as these. And, Father, when all of this is said and done, save us a place in your kingdom where we may praise your name throughout all eternity. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you. This young man, this young man, I tell you, he's a preacher. I'm very proud of him. He's a family man. He's a young family man, and he's striving to be all that God would have him to be as a husband, amen, provider, and also uh, the head of his household, amen. And certainly we are so proud to have him as part of our church family. And uh, certainly we want him to just have his way today. And we are soliciting your prayers for him that he will give us the word that we need in times such as these. Amen. With no further ado, uh, we want to present to some and to introduce to others uh, none other than Minister Daniel Molden, amen, uh, who's going to bring our word today. And we are going to just uh, pray that God use him in a mighty way today. And I believe in our heart that God is going to do just that. Amen. Now I present to you and introduce to others, Minister Daniel Molden. I am uh, Minister Daniel Molden. And I'm so glad to be here this morning. Uh, Greater Galilee, uh, I have truly been missing y'all very much so. And I am, it's an honor to stand here once again in front of you. And I am 
giving honor to God for being ahead of my life, to the pastor and first lady, to all ministerial staff, to the whole entire Greater Galilee family. I am just so appreciative of you. And um, to the, give honor to my wife as she's at home and to the family that's concerned about her whereabouts. She is supposed to be C-section December 29th, due date January 4th. So we're in that time of any day now. So that's what we waiting on. We waiting on a uh, little Jersey to be here uh, very soon. But um, to, to before I hop into the message, I'm gonna go into a quick word of prayer. Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to be in front of you, Lord. I thank you for uh, giving me this word that you have given me to give to your people, Lord. I ask you to humble my spirit, Lord, and I ask you that I decrease, that you may increase, Lord, and that I present, that I present it the way that you want me to present it. And I praise you and I thank you for this opportunity. I love you forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. This title of this message will be, God is keeping us grounded. God is keeping us grounded. Uh, the main scripture that I will be coming from will be Ephesians 4, verses 14 through 15. Ephesians 4, verses 14 through 15. And it states this, it says, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of man and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. God is keeping us grounded. Now, when I first got to thinking, I was like, Lord, what you want me to say? What you want me to say? He said, the first thing, the first word he, that he brought to me, he said, gravity. I said, gravity. Well, why would you want me to speak? What gravity got to do? What you want me to say about gravity? And I said, I, said, I know what gravity is. I said, gravity is, basic definition would be uh, anything that goes up, must come down, right, right, right. So God said, no, it's deeper than that. I want you to explain to them the relationship with gravity in this earth because through that, through that, you know, through that symbol, it will explain the relationship between me and you. It will explain the relationship between me and the church. I said, I said, okay, okay. He said, he said, he said go look up and I want you to see for yourself what gravity is. Now, I ain't no scientist. I ain't got no doctorate. You know, I just know that I'm, I'm a student. I'm a person of study. So I, I went and looked up some things, and I'm just gonna share some things with you. It, it said, I said, so what does gravity do? It says, uh, uh, like I said, the simple explanation is everything that goes up must come down. You know, it's the reason why you jump and you come back down to the ground. It said, uh, gravity is keeping us planted on this earth. It keeps the at atmosphere around the earth. It said, life without gravity, where, where uh, things will happen, things will occur, like oceans, rivers, and lakes will float away into space, and the entire atmosphere will vanish. So I was looking at that, I said, okay, God. Okay, we back in science class. Uh, gravity, atmosphere, I said, I said, I remember that. He said, he, said, he said, but do you know what the atmosphere does for the, for the Earth? I said, no, I don't. So I looked into that. He said, the atmosphere, it said, it, it absorbs harm ultraviolet radiation from the sun, reduces temperature or stream, uh, that temperature that can be extreme between day and night. You know, it does things like that. It gives life to the living organisms, to us, as we work in. So he said, he said that gravity is what helps atmosphere to do its job. Without gravity, there wouldn't be no atmosphere because there wouldn't be nothing to hold it in place. So I said, okay, God. I said, okay, I'm kind of, it's coming to me, it's coming to me. So gravity keeps the atmosphere from escaping into space, which is the same thing that keeps us from escaping in space. That's gravity, right? So he said, now I want you to do this. He said, he said, let's look at gravity. Just as it is in the earth, it's what keeps us in place here. He said, I want you to look at gravity, and I want you to compare it to gravity for us in the, in the spiritual, the people that are trying to walk in, in God's way. God is our gravity. He is the one who presents the doctrine, the word, the guidelines that govern us, that keeps us grounded, right? And in atmosphere, I want you to look at it in a way of, like, your parents, the example, the example of protection and guidance and love. And the reason why I want you to look at atmosphere in that way is because a lot of people – a lot of things, we, we heard a lot of things about just the atmosphere. See, the gravity, they, they, they simplified it for you. It's because many, many s smart people, as they say, tried to get an understanding of it. See, they simplified even what was it? Sir Isaac Newton tried to come up with a theory. Uh, Albert Einstein come, tried to come up with a theory. But they said all theories that have been created have been questioning. So they're trying to figure out what's really going on. But the truth be told, it's not the atmosphere that's keeping the world. It's the gravity. It's not your mama that's keeping you. 
It's not your mama that's holding things together. It's not your daddy. It's not your, your grandparents. So that person that presented God to you that's holding it together is God that's holding it all together. So we're going to hop right into this about God keeping us grounded, God keeping us grounded. So the first thing that we have to understand when it comes to God keeping us grounded is that it's going to require faith. That's the first thing. That's the first thing you have to understand in the relationship with God. And, and, and by me stating that, I'm going to go to a scripture here in Hebrews 11 and 6. And it explains this to us. In Hebrews 11 and 6, it talks about how the uh, it's impossible to please God, right? It's impossible to please God without faith. Let's go to it. Hebrews 11 and 6. It states this. Boom. It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So that, so God lets you know that it's impossible to please God if you don't believe in him. And then we also ha we have to we have to believe. What are we believing? What are we believing? You go to Romans 8, Romans, uh, actually Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 10. Um, these are scriptures for your memory. And, uh, and that it talks about, it says, believing that God died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead. And through that, we are saved. That's the first step into realizing that we are grounded in God. You have to believe what happened and that it, they died, died on the cross for our sins, right? So that's in Romans uh, chapter 10, verse 8 through 10. And as we said in Romans 11 and 6, it, it tells us that it's impossible to please God uh, without faith. And it says you have to believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of them that digitally seek him. So after you get to that place about faith, about faith and and you have to realize, okay, he said he's a rewarder to them that digitally seek him. He said, I have to believe that as well. So what does it mean to uh, digitally seek him? Well, in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it teaches us this. It says, it teaches us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So that means in order for me to access him to my faith, for my faith to increase, what does that mean? I have to increase my knowledge of the word of God. I have to increase my knowledge of understanding who God is. So that requires some work. So First, you take the step of faith. See, faith is that point that you get to, that we all have got to, that my way ain't working no more. I, I can't do nothing else. I need someone to step in, so I'm going to step out. I'm going to step out. I'm going to believe in God. This is a faith walk. So that's what you do. You step out and you believe. You say, Lord, I can't do it no more. I can't do it. I can't do it my way. So I'm going to believe that your son died on the cross for my sins. I'm going to believe that. And then I'm going to digi digitally seek you because that's what you said I have to do. I have to seek you. So then you go into James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, and this is what it teaches. It, say, it, it says, anyone who is lacking wisdom, ask for wisdom. It says, ask for wisdom. It says, it says, but when you do it, don't do it with any doubt. Don't be doubting when you ask God for wisdom, because when you doubt, when you ask God for anything, it makes you a double-minded person. And, with, and by that same scripture, in them same scriptures, it says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And that's not, we don't want to be that. We don't want to be that. So the first thing to do to realize that, to be grounded in God, we have to understand that, hey, you have to take that step of faith. You have to fully submit yourself and let go. You can't be one foot in and one foot out. Fully submit yourself. Fully surrender. Fully surrender so you can receive your gravity to hold you down, right? Because we got a lot going on in this world. We got the corona. We got the um, uh, racial wars and people feeling their different opinions and all these different uh, things going on and different beliefs coming up and stuff like that because everybody is trying to find something to believe in, right? Everybody's trying to find something to believe in. And those who have false doctrine, they know that. They know that in times of trouble, people are trying to find something that can ground them. So they going through the world trying to spread their messages quick. You see them everywhere now. They just, they so bold with it now, right? It's because they know that people need something to keep them grounded, right? So they trying to spread their so-called gravity which is not real, right? It's not, it's not real to existence. So, so what you have to do is you have to take that step of faith. Then you have to seek him. And through seeking him, that start meditating the word day and night. And I'm going to read this scripture. One of my favorite scriptures, I, I think I almost, I almost read this scripture almost every time I speak. It's Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. I love to read it because it uplifts me every time I read it. It lets me know what I need to be doing in, in this walk with God. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. This. He says, when wisdom enters into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant to thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. Right, that right there lets me know that when I, when I begin to take pride and, and passion, and I begin to 
learned to love wisdom and instruction, and, and I began to surround myself with wise counsel. Then, then I will be grounded. Then everything I do will become my makeup, my decisions. I won't have to think twice before doing wrong because they just be in me to do right. So the thing is, for you to get to a place of feeling like you're grounded, do you have something that's holding you? You see, a lot of times we think that, uh, like I said, a lot of times people think that the thing that's holding the world together is the atmosphere, but it's really the gravity. And like I said in the beginning, I said, you think it's your mama holding it down, but it's really God. You think it's your daddy holding it down, but it's really God. In order for you to get to that same type of place, you have to first really step out on faith, and then you have to digitally seek him all the time. Make it become a, a, a pleasant unto your soul. Make it become pleasant unto your soul. And also, as I'm bringing it to a close, uh, I want to encourage you to read these scriptures. These are good scriptures for us. Um, Ephesians chapter 4 through chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 4 through chapter 6 is uh, these scriptures, they have, they, they, they uplift us and they teach you the characteristics of, uh, of Christians. It teaches you the characteristics of Christians. It's good to read that whole chapter, but I, I would say the key in on Ephesians chapter 4 through chapter 6, it teaches you the lifestyle and the, and the godly behavior. When I was growing up, we used to sing a song, and it's by the uh, Gospel 4, by the Gospel 4, it was called In the Word. It said, whatever you need, you can find it in the Word of God. Whatever you need, you can find it in the Word of God. I came here today just to encourage you to access your gravity, access what, what, what can hold you down and keep you grounded in these times where we feel like we're getting tossed to and fro. Different beliefs, they coming out with vaccine. I ain't taking it, you taking it. I ain't. Everybody is up, up in an uproar because really you don't have nothing ground, grounding you. So what I'm saying is find something that can ground you and, then, and find God. Cause that's the only way that can ground us in these days. Okay, so that's what I want to encourage y'all to do is to do that and just keep believing because what I do is very simple. It's very simple because people act like trying to live for God, they make it complicated for themselves. They make it complicated. Let me tell you exactly, this is what I do. This is what I do. I just did this yesterday or the day before. Had a situation, me and my wife had a disagreement. And I had the mindset like, well, I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing else, right? What happened was, I remember uh, looking up, what I did was, I, I, what I do, I type in my phone, I say, what does the Bible say about marriage? What does the Bible say about a husband in relationship with his wife? What does the Bible say about how a husband is supposed to talk to his wife, right? So I, when I did that, the Bible says, he talks about being compassionate with your wife, being respectful to your wife. And I'm paraphrasing it for you. He said, being he, he, said, he, said, he said, because you don't do these things, see what he said? He said, you hinder your own blessings. You hinder your, I won't hear you. God said, I won't even hear you. If you're not going to hear your wife, you know, if you're not going to be with your wife. So I had to, I started looking up things. So what I'm saying to you is, it's not as complicated. All you got to do is use these electronic devices. Type in, what does the Bible say about anger, lust, uh, whatever that's battling you, whatever that you have deep inside you that you're struggling with. You type it in and, you, and what's going to pop up, it's going to say, it's going to something they're going to say. It's on openbible.info. That's what's going to pop up. And it's going to be a list of scriptures. Now, I understand that we all are not, um, I guess, you know, way high up in our knowledge, but you know somebody that's in your corner. If you don't know somebody that's in your corner, I ask you to get in contact with this church, this ministry. Uh, you can contact us at www.greatergalileemnbc.com. That's where you can contact us at. I ask you to get in contact with us so you can get what you need, so you can be grounded, so you don't have to be tossed to and fro. I'm telling you right now that it's not your grandmother and the words that she said and the, and the prayers that's just keeping the whole family together. It's God at the end of the day. It just look good. It just appear well, right? It just appear with the atmosphere is keeping the sun rays and stuff like that from us and keeping us still living as organism. But the thing is, atmosphere wouldn't be nothing if gravity wasn't here, right? Mama wouldn't be nothing. Daddy wouldn't be nothing. Everybody that you see up in ministry, they wouldn't be nothing if God wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing. So on this on this great Sunday that's right before Christmas, huh? right before we talk about and get into uh, expressing our love for Jesus Christ coming into this world, this, the, the, the beauty that's in that already, I want you to remember, like, in order for me to fully appreciate Jesus Christ coming to this world, I need to do what it needs to be grounded in him because that's our greatest appreciation to him is doing all the things that's required to stay in connection with him. So I encourage y'all today, as I come to a closing and I bring it to the closing round to the, uh, the, the main message of any message is to give the, the invitation, the invitation to you to uh, come into discipleship. 
the invitation to come to this site, like I said before, you can contact us if you want a prayer request, anything at www.greatergalileemvc.com. Uh, if you want to become a part of this family, or if you just want to become a part of God's family, see, we all work as together. So I ask you that if you need that, I ask you just to come to us and, and get to a place in your life where you are grounded and not tossed to and fro in these times. God bless you. My prayers is always with you. God bless. Thank you.